Hey everybody, my name's Patrick, and in this tech tip video, I'm going to provide an introduction to Vertiges Studio workflow. Let's dive in. All right, so if you're new to Workflow, basically it is this web-based designer that allows you to configure custom widgets using this kind of flexible, low-code, flowchart-based you know, based interface that you can drag and drop these different components to build a, a custom tool or widget that can be deployed to ArcGIS applications like Web App Builder, Experience Builder, or even ArcGIS Pro, um, as well as inside of our Vertiges Studio viewers such as our Vertige Studio web and, and mobile products. Basically, the idea behind workflows is to create custom apps without having to write, you know, full on JavaScript or use an IDE. So using this configuration framework, you can really reduce the development time required to deploy a custom widget. You can tailor the specific unique requirements to your business processes using a variety of those different activities that support conditional logic and standard form, uh, programming techniques. Uh, and ultimately, you can improve your end users experiences by providing them with an actual custom tailored tool that is specifically designed for their unique requirements. Additionally, the workflow tool allows you to even go further and provides opportunities to integrate with different business systems or REST APIs or databases. There's a forms engine that's built into the product that allows you to create these dynamic forms that your end users can interact with. And as I mentioned earlier, there's very versatile deployment options. So you can create a workflow and add it to Web App Builder, but you can also take for the most part, that same workflow and then add it to our Vertige Studio web product or run it in an offline state in our Vertige Studio mobile tool as well. All right, so here you can see we're in Web App Builder and I've added a few out of the box widgets such as the you know, layer list control and the select features tool. But I've also added a couple of custom widgets here as well. Um, using uh, our workflow products. So here, you know, I've got some widgets for querying features, searching for features and adding new features onto the map. Uh, in this scenario, let's run this workflow for querying water lines specifically um, based on these different uh, user input parameters. So I know Web App Builder has an out-of-the-box query widget tool, but the nice thing with the workflow product is you can really tailor these forms based on your end users you know, requirements and really trying to make this operation for searching for features really intuitive for non-GIS users. So in this scenario, I've given the user the option to search for water lines by filtering features based on the map extent, based on the uh, installation date. So we could toggle this on and off if we wanted to. So maybe we we're interested in finding all the water lines, I don't know, within the last five years or so. I could also filter water lines based on the diameter size. So maybe we wanna find all of the water lines that are greater than or equal to 300 millimeters in diameter based on the system and the material. And all of these values can be being can be populated based on the coded value domains of your layers, or they can be you know, included and customized in the underlying workflow form. Um, here, let's maybe just run a simple query just to find all the water lines you know, based on the map extent and nothing else. If I click query here, you're going to see we're going to return 167 water lines that are being highlighted in the map. Uh, let's maybe instead search for water lines that are within the map extent, but are also of type cast iron. I'm gonna go ahead and click query. And now you can see we have 83 water lines that are selected. And if we zoom in, you can see um, they're being highlighted on the map as well. Um, and they're all of cast iron. So this is a really nice example of a way that you can build a, a custom widget and deploy that to your end users to really streamline the process for searching for a given asset on the map. Um, and the nice thing is these workflows can also be deployed in different applications. So here we're in Web App Builder, um, but here I'm now in our Vertiges Studio web product. Uh, which is built on Esri's 4.x JavaScript API. Um, and here I've also added a couple of other workflows for doing different operations like 
integrating with different REST APIs or adding new features on the map to generating directions from different locations to generating demographic charts through some analysis to filtering data on the map and so on. But here we can see this is our query widget tool. And it, again, albeit looks a little bit different, is fundamentally pretty much the same tool. Um, and here, um, again, I can continue to collapse these elements. And maybe in this scenario, I might want to filter by date. So maybe I want to find all the water lines still within the current map extent, but that have been installed pretty recently. So within the last five years, I'm going to go ahead and click query. And again here, this is going to return those results, highlight the underlying water lines on the map, and we can see we've got nine water lines that have been returned. Um, and if we scroll to the right here, we can see this is the underlying installation dates for each of these individual features. And you can continue to uh, pull in that attribute information uh, accordingly. Um, so again, that's the, the you know pretty much the same workflow running in Vertigis Studio Web. Um, and also if we wanted to jump to our Vertigis Studio mobile product, here we can see I'm now in an offline application where I've actually downloaded some of this uh, data offline. And I've created a, a custom tool using our workflow products to make it easy for my actual field workers when they're offline to search for assets using the same kind of query tool that we're seeing here. Again, uh, the this is built using Esri's ArcGIS.net uh, runtime, um, but uh, you can see, so the look and feel looks a little bit different, um, but in general, the underlying process is the same. So again, we can filter by map extent. Maybe in this scenario, I want to find all the water lines that are of type cast iron and are greater than or equal to, I don't know, 300 uh, millimeters in diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and click query. And here you can see we've got 73 results. If I click on one of them, uh, here you can see the diameter is at least 300 and the material is cast iron. So again, a, a nice example showing the underlying uh, workflow technology being able to be run in these different environments. Now, how you actually design the workflows is done using our web-based designer. So in order to get access to that web-based designer, you can navigate to apps.vertigestudio.com. And here you can see some of our other products. Um, you know, here I mentioned our Vertigis Studio web and, and mobile tools, but we're gonna go ahead and launch the Vertigis Studio workflow product. This will take us to our web-based uh, SaaS uh, interface. You can also install this on-premise. Um, and I'll just sign out there because it single signed me on, but basically here you have the ability to log in with ArcGIS Online, or ArcGIS Enterprise. Let's log in with ArcGIS Online. And then once I've actually authenticated, I'll then have access to the web-based designer where I can then choose the type of workflow that I want to develop. So I can create a workflow for our web products, for mobile, or for web app builder and so on. I can also look at last modified workflows. So these are workflows stored within my ArcGIS Online content that I've been working on. And this is specifically the query workflow that we just ran. Um, so in this scenario here, the idea behind workflows is our developers configure these activities that you can drag and drop onto the design surface, um, whether you want to get the current logged in user to other you know, different programming operations like doing if statements and for each loops to more GIS operations like doing buffers or querying layers or get maybe mobile operations where you want to get the field workers location. There's a large library of activities here from doing feature editing to you know, issuing web requests um, that I encourage you to check out and we'll be covering some of these throughout the, the rest of these tech tip videos. Um, but in general, the idea is you can drag and drop them onto the design surface and then um, you know provide some inputs to them they'll perform some logic and then give you an, an output which you can then pass from one activity to another. Um, the nice thing too is as you design these workflows, they're easy to share with uh, different users. So you don't have to be a hardcore JavaScript developer to actually understand a workflow. In this scenario, I can see I've got a form. If Inside of the form, there's different form elements. Um, so here you can customize the different form elements uh, uh, available. And again, by dragging and dropping, 
Maybe I want to include the option to upload a file or maybe have the option to select some geometry on the map to filter these water lines by or maybe you know provide a, a number range uh, to, to filter the, the data by. The idea is you can kind of drag and drop these adjust some properties for them, and then ultimately save and publish these as custom widgets for your end users. So again, going back here, I'm inside of this form. We can see if the user selects the option to query, um, then we will perform the query. If no features are found, then we can, we'll present the user with an alert to try again. But if we do have features, I mean, basically if this is false, we'll then show some results to the features based on the query um, that they configured in the form. Um, and then lastly, when you're happy with a workflow and you save it, it's gonna get stored back inside of ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise as an item that you can then share with different groups of users. So hopefully that gave you a brief introduction to Vertigis Studio workflow, and I encourage you to watch some of our other tech tip videos to learn more. Bye for now. Never miss the Vertigis Studio Tech Tip. Like and subscribe below. And as always, you can learn more by visiting vertigis.com.